Good afternoon. Welcome to the graduation ceremony, Brockton Fire Department, class of 2023-01. At this time, I would like to invite firefighter Sebastian Charles to the podium for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order! Order! This time I would like to invite to the podium Reverend Ortez Vandros for the invocation. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, the psalmist David declared that this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for the grace, mercy, and blessings that you give to all of us without measure. We are here to celebrate the 12 week journey of these men and women who did not simply choose a career Rather, they answered a divine call to be a servant. We are grateful for the leadership of Chief Nardelli and the instructors who have facilitated, trained, and prepared these men and women for graduation. Thanks to their family and friends for their unfailing love and continued support along the way. And as we witnessed the pinning of the badges and receiving certificates, caused them to never forget that the call chose them and they answered to be a servant. Guide them, protect them, watch over them, keep them, and above all, bless them. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Take your seats. Reverend, it was definitely 13 weeks, though. <clears throat> Unfortunately, uh, Mayor Sullivan couldn't be here today to speak. Uh, at this time, I would like to uh, invite uh, Fire Chief Brian Nardelli to the podium. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everyone. What an incredible day, right? I think it's more incredible for the 17 members of the recruit class sitting in front of us that 13 weeks ago they started on a, an incredible journey. That in journey will take them many places. I think uh, starting out I'd like to thank a number of people that are here today. Um, again, Mayor Sullivan was unable to make it today. He does send his sincerest congratulations to each and every one of you. Um, I spoke to him last night. He, he was not, he was under the weather and today he decided he probably be best that he stay home due to the fact that he didn't want to get anyone else sick, which we truly appreciate. Um, I'd like to thank uh, CFO Troy Clarkson, who's been an integral part of this entire process. Um, about a year and a half ago, Deputy Chief DePasquale, myself, and Deputy Chief Albany uh, went to the CFO and said, we'd like to apply for a SAFER grant. 16 positions to be able to staff apparatus adequately, potentially move into putting a, a tenth piece of apparatus back in service. The city was adamant that this was a great idea and it would help the residents immensely. They've stood by us steadfastly, along with the city council, our, our representatives and senators at, in, the, at, in, in Boston have been unwavering in their support of the Brockton Fire Department and what we have. Fire Academy, uh, they weren't able, Marshall Ostrowski was not able to make it today. Um, he sends his regards. Uh, the Fire Academy has been a great partner with us over the years. Um, when it comes to training our members, there's certain, you know, the city is our, is our classroom, but we have the ability to now move forward and go to the fire academy, perform in a burn building, the gas field, a number of different things. So they get the best, edu they get the best of both worlds um, when it comes to their education. I can't not thank Deputy Hendrigan and the training staff enough. Um, as a former uh, Deputy Chief of Training, I know what it takes to do this. You're, you're, you're in the building before the sun comes up. 
and you're there long after it goes down, long before the recruits get there and long after they leave. There is preparation tirelessly to get this work done. And um, what they do every day is um, so important to the fabric of this department and how we train our members. As we move forward, um, one of the interesting things that I, I wanted to note today was Two years ago, our numbers were down taking the exam for the firefighter, taking the firefighter's exam, and we held an open house. Um, we were the only ones in the state to do it at the time for the upcoming exam. And I'm, I'm proud to say, working with Deputy Hendrigan and his staff, um, two of the members of this recruit class um, that I'm going to call on when we do our next, when we do our next uh, recruiting campaign, two of those members that are in this class today were actually at that recruiting and followed step by step what they needed to do to try to make sure we were giving city of Brockton kids jobs. And that's what really matters. City kids, city jobs, and that's what civil service stands for. And they've been a supporter of that for many years. And I'm glad to see that they're here with us today. So to the recruits, what do I say? Um, you've chosen a calling, like Reverend Vandross has said. You've chosen a calling that's gonna bring you in very difficult spots, very difficult positions every day. You're gonna see things that no human should see. But you've chosen this calling to follow. Is it dangerous? Absolutely, there's no question. But you are here to protect the residents of Brockton. And there is no greater, greater calling than that, to protect your own community. The day, day one, uh, when I come in to speak to the recruits, I always talk about the service that they'll perform. They are servants to the residents of the city of Brockton, keeping them safe every day. We're not manufacturing anything here in the Brockton Fire Department. What we're manufacturing is service. We're manufacturing the ability to take care and protect our residents from fire, flood, EMS, hazardous materials. Unfortunately, the day we live in now, hostile events, meaning active shooter events. I think in my 27 years in the fire service, I look back, if you told me 27 years ago that I would be coming before a class and talking about hazardous materials, which is an integral part of what we do every day, or the involvement we have in EMS now is very deep. We're the first responders, we're first there every moment, every time someone calls 911. Or even the fact that I would be, we would be teaching people how to 